Good morning, everybody. I do not uh, need to introduce Stefano Sacrioli. He will talk about the X, and I'm, I'm enjoying this talk. Thanks. So this is supposed to be above, but before going to both, I would like to review with you briefly the initiatives we have made, uh, in, we have created, we have initiated in the past uh, one year and a, one year and a half on the Debian derivatives mailing list to collaborate with the derivatives. So I'll go very quick, very quick, quickly to them, and then I have some uh, um, question for discussion that you can find on Gobi. So they are already there. So if you are, if you have Gobi 05. You can go to, you can connect to Gobi Debian Net, and then open the DC11 dash derivatives document. So I will put it on screen when I finish and going through the slide. So um, very quickly, j just first of all, a bit of rationale. So why I think we should collaborate with derivatives? Well, I think that derivatives have changed the way in we we create distro. So nowadays there are less and less distributions which are created from scratch and more and more distributions which are created based on an existing distribution. And that is great because the, the derivative, so the new distro created, can focus on customization and the, the mother distro, the upstream distribution, can reach out to a new public. And this is both of users who benefit from the work which is done in the upstream distribution, but also of potential contributors, which can, in theory, contribute to all the three of upstream derivatives. So Debian is a particularly popular base for derivatives. So if you look at um, these two review sites, you will find out that they claim that there is something like 130 active distributions which are based on Debian. I think it's uh, the, the, the most derived distribution which exists. And I think it is the case for various reasons. Well, th and essentially the, the reasons are that the derivative benefit from all the quality and licensing check we do in Debian. They benefit from a huge code base of packages. We have something like 30,000 packages in Debian. And we have a reputation to be a stable system, so that sort of shield the derivatives from uh, unexpected breakages. And also we have a philosophy of not being targeted for a specific target user. So if you are a derivative who want to target a system to a specific target, well, starting from someone which is supposed to be neutral is, is actually a good choice. So I bothered you with this diagram already in my DPI talk, so I, won't, I will skip it. Essentially, what I'm saying is that the way we distribute software to final users has changed a lot in the past five to 10 years. We now have several layers, several vendors, which base their work one on another. We have upstream software here on the left. We have a first distribution who package their work and as its own users. And then we have a downstream of additional derivatives that are based one on another. And at each block in that chain, you get new user and potentially new, user contribu new contributors. This is great because every time we add a block, potentially we get new users and new contributors. We get free software to more people and we get free software to more eyes, which are able to spot bugs and potentially f fix them. So this is great. But what I've been telling to the, 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 the contributors of several Debian derivatives in the past uh, year, year and a half, is that I think that we should all make an effort to make all this sustainable. Because we should take care that we do not uh, distribute too much the work. We consolidate the work so that we all benefit from the work wherever it is done in that chain. So I think the, the, the rationale which I've been proposing to people that, of course, not everybody agrees with, but I think that the vision that Debian should propose is that we are all doing a distribution because we want to improve free software and we want free software to succeed. So I'm, I've tried to pass the message that we care more about free software itself than about the success of a single distribution in that chain. So if we, if we agree on that vision, I think that is the, the main reason that it's pretty evident that in that case we should all make an effort that no matter where we put improvement in that chain, we should make them flow upstream, flow to the left. So this for me is the main principle for which we should collaborate with derivatives, and that applies as Debian as it applies to other. So if that principle 
is uh, worth for other, then it's worth also for Debian. And it means that we, which are often here in this diagram, should really make an effort to push our changes upstream. So this is, for me, a universal principle, which explains why we should work together with derivatives, but also why we should work with our upstream, which usually are the original software developers. So this is pretty much it for the reason why I think we should collaborate with derivatives. And then I will go briefly through some of the initiatives which have, we, have been create, we have created in Debian in the past one year and a half to actually improve collaboration with derivatives. So the first one is what we have called the, the, the derivatives front desk. It started out of a discussion among several Debian and Ubuntu developers at UDSM in May 2010. Um, and the idea of the derivatives front desk, which is something which exists in Debian, is two, two, two main purposes. The first one is offering a contact point. So imagine you are someone working in a derivative and you want to give back your changes to Debian, but you don't know how to do that. Maybe because you don't know the, how Debian is split in team, maybe because you tried but you get someone did not reply to you, or anything like this. So the idea is to provide a contact point, a mail address, you can mail saying, okay, I'm working on a derivative, I have this bunch of changes, and I want to give them, um, give them back to Debian. How could I do that? Can you help me? So this is the first role, a contact point. The second role of the derivatives front desk is to actually give a discussion place where people from derivatives of Fond Debian can stay together and discuss on how to do collaboration with derivatives. And a sort of third reason, which is an intended side effect, is that to make emerge in Debian uh, a group of people who care about collaboration with derivatives and actually are willing to help derivatives in get their code back to Debian. And this was the idea. Uh, the, the three purposes have been, you can find them declined in the, uh, well, there is a wiki page which describes what the derivatives front desk is. We have announced it in via the Debian press. There is a mailing list, which is Debian derivatives at least Debian org, and there is a contact point, which is the contact point for external derivatives, which are not necessarily on the list, and which is derivatives at Debian org, which gets redirected to the mailing list. So this is the idea of the, the, the derivatives front desk, and I think it's been working pretty well. So these are some statistics from the, from the mailing list. So we are now at something like uh, uh, 180 members of the, am I reading it right? Yes, 180 members of the mailing list, and it's fairly active. So we discuss their various initiatives. Uh, often, um, uh, every now and then, we have a new derivatives popping up saying, okay, this is what I'm doing, this is what we do, and for every single uh, presentation introduction mail, you get other people suggesting, okay, this is, some, this is who you can contact in Debian to integrate your work. So I think it's working pretty well. This is the first step, so the, the, the derivatives from desk. A second step, which is quite recent, is what we've called DEX, for Debian Derivatives Exchange. So the observation which, is under, which underlies DEX is that we seem all to agree that patches should flow upstream. We agree that in Debian, patches should go, go to upstream, and people in derivatives seem to agree that patches should go to Debian. But actually, that does not often happen. Often it does not happen. So why is this the case? So if you look from the side of upstream distribution, like Debian, you see stuff like, uh, I can keep track of patches in so many derivatives. There are just too many. So imagine this is a, a man hypothetical maintainer, and this is some of the common thought you can find. Or you, you have maintainer who complains that changes should be made in Debian in the first place. Or you have maintainers saying, you did it wrong. You did a change. That was not the way I, want, I intended it. You should do that in another way. And some of the common thought we, we, you have if you're an upstream, you might have if you're an upstream, a maintainer in an upstream distro, is that after all, it's not your responsibility. You have already enough to stuff to do. And after all, you're a volunteer. So it's up to the downstream derivative to come to you and do the job of integrating. Then if you looked from the point of view of a downstream derivative, well, you have uh, experiences like, I tried contacting the maintainer, but they never applied. I gave back the patches, and they've been, li uh, they've been staying in the BTS for six months without an answer. Or, well, you know, we, we have our own problem to solve. We cannot solve Debian problem. And you see that the basic thoughts are the same if you look from downstream point of view. It's not my responsibility. I have enough problems already. And you know what? I have no time. I am a volunteer as well. And so who cares about the upstream distribution? So these are the two different points of view. And in fact, I think we need to realize that it's not only Debian problem. 
it's not only downstream problem, but it's actually a common problem. So the idea behind that DEX was to try doing something different. A bit of history, all the idea of DEX came out uh, from a discussion among uh, myself, Matt Zimmerman, and other Ubuntu people last year at DevConf 10. And it was announced after some discussion on how to do that in March 2011. And the idea is to create a small initiative in which every initiative focus on a given set of patches. So you know that there exist some patches in a specific downstream distribution, in a specific derivative, and you, define, you clearly define that set, those set of patches, and you say, okay, I want to merge that in Debian. And to do that, you have people working together from Debian and from the specific derivative which is involved. The idea is to have uh, relatively short projects, short-lived, which can be completed, for instance, in a sprint, or maybe in a short time frame, like a couple of months. And in particular, we think that having visible progress, so a list of what has been done and a list of what still needs to be done, is somehow useful to actually drive initiative to completion. Um, so DEX is a generic idea, and you might have specific A sub team, and in particular, right now we have only one sub team, which is a team of people who cares about the integration among Debian and Ubuntu and focus on closing specific deltas in, uh, among Debian and Ubuntu. We have completed a first project with Index, which we called Ubuntu Ancient Patches. Actually, they have, because uh, I didn't contribute much to this. So um, the idea was that there was something like 250 patches in Ubuntu, uh, which th th those status with respect to Debian was not clear. So we didn't know if they were integrated, if they were not integrated, if they were obsolete with respect to Debian. So essentially, it was a massive review process of these 250 patches, which took something like two months, I think. It's now essentially completed. And while going through that, we, we encountered some, well, expected issues. For instance, we encountered maintainers in Debian to which we forwarded the patches, and they did not reply. So, or maybe they say, OK, hey, we look at it tomorrow, and then they don't do that. Pretty common behavior. Um, so the idea was, OK, just use what we know how to use in Debian. So NMU, delayed NMU, 15 days, and we integrated a couple of patches this way. And we encountered also other cases, which is like, uh, OK, I look at your patch. I want to integrate it, but I don't want to do that unless the upstream author, in this sense, the real software developer, agrees with that. And this is the case in which we have a different judgment call, essentially. Some derivative, it's OK, we're shipping a patch. And some other derivative upstream to that is not OK. And this is fair. I mean, we should accept the fact that we might have disagreement. So the, the red part, which is still to do, is essentially a couple of those cases. So I think it's been pretty a success and an example of how we can do things. Uh, and then we have also some resources to drive uh, DEX initiatives. We have a GSOC project, a Google Summer of Code project by Nathan Handler, uh, mentored by Matt Zimmerman, and essentially is a small uh, task-oriented interface to see the progress. So you have a, I don't have a screenshot because yesterday it was not working, given that it's be, we are being working on that for the, doing the Summer of Code, which is ongoing right now. But essentially, it's a list of things to be done associated to a specific initiative, possibly linked with the Debian BTS, the bugs, so we can see what are the bugs in Debian keeping track of it, but enabling you to add uh, additional comments. So you can add the comments which are not part of the, uh, the BTS, like tags or uh, DEX specific comments. And um, it's being in use by, for doing the Python 2.7 by default migration, right? Is it correct? Okay. Right now, and uh, I think it's it's a pretty interesting tool, and potentially can become a generic tool we use in Debian to actually do task-oriented initiatives in Debian. So it's not particularly tied to Dex. It can be made way more general than that. Uh, and finally, the third initiative I'd like to mention explicitly is the derivative census by Paul Wise, Pubs. And the idea was to actually have a census of the derivatives which exist with some more information than what we have in, on Distro Watch. So um, collecting inform specific information about derivatives and uh, in a way that is useful to Debian, 
that it, in a way that it helps, you know, uh, developing a relationship among Debian and derivatives, and also which enable us to do some sort of quality assurance check, not only on Debian, but on all the derivatives we, we, that participate in the census. So the census is uh, on this page on the wiki, and uh, at the moment, we are collecting quite some information. So we are collecting, for instance, web contact points, so a website, planet, uh, co email contacts, or the like. We are collecting developer-oriented information, like version control system, uh, development list, pointers to developer documentation, popcorn information, and so on and so forth. We are collecting sources list line for each distribution which is in the census. Uh, there are a couple of... Uh, clever tricks to ensure that the information is current. So for each enter in the census, we have the maintainer of the census, so who is responsible for keeping the information up to date. And we have a timestamp to see how, if, if it's possible out to date, the information is possibly out of date or not. And you can see the template here. Well, I won't change desktop, otherwise I'll probably get issues with the Beamer, but there is the census template on the wiki. And right now, there are 38 derivatives indexed, and I think the last one has been added today, right? So it's still pretty active, and I think it's a good share of the uh, existed derivatives uh, in, that we have in the sense of. And as interesting outcome of collecting the information, well, uh, pubs help setting up planet derivatives. So we have created a planet which aggregates blog posts coming from the various derivatives. We have discovered a couple of fun facts about uh, derivative logos, like that a lot of them are created using non-free software, including the Debian one. Uh, we have seen some uh, logo inheritance. So you, if you look at the tree of derivatives, you see that the, sub the, the derivative distribution often inherit the logo of their upstream distribution. So this is fun stuff, but it is the, stuff with, uh, the kind of stuff you can do when you have the information. And then some other uh, useful info that came out of the census is like uh, we discovered that several derivatives do not ship source packages. So I don't think it's out of malice, but simply they probably think it's okay because Debian has the sources. But as you know, license-wise is not always the case. So this is something we can improve. Uh, and we, for instance, we provided some requirement analysis for uh, the LinkedIn developers in how we can best support distribution-specific checks to having, by having different profiles. And I'm sure Pubs will, can tell you more later on if you have more information about the census. So this is the main initiative we've been going through in the past year, in a year and a half, and then there are some more coming. So there is a page with derivative guidelines. So the idea is to leverage the experience of existing derivative and to explain to new derivatives what should they do if they want to create a Debian derivative. So what are the best practices? What should, what should you change, for instance, to avoid that popcorn information goes to someone else, to avoid bothering maintainers for bugs that exist only in there? So all this kind of knowledge, which is useful to consolidate in some place, and we have been doing that on the derivatives guidelines page. Uh, there are plans to do integration in the sense of doing sort of data warehousing in Debian to gather information about all the derivatives. So for instance, uh, Pub has been designing that, gather information in UDD, in packages Debian.org, in the PTS, in the patch tracker, so that it's possible to see from a central place all those information from the derivatives. Uh, there are ideas to integrate that in, DD, in DDPO and in Air Medicine, as we already do for Ubuntu, at least for Air Medicine to integrate bug tracking systems so that we can easily have links from bugs in different distributions, which are related. And another idea is to actually uh, think about how we can make DebConf a contact uh, place, which is a contact place for all derivatives, and maybe even leverage some sponsoring for derivatives which are interested in helping out Debian and DebConf. All this is pubs powered once more, so we might want to ask him for more information. Uh, So this is it for a brief review of what we have been doing in the past year, year and a half around derivatives. And I can leave it here for a discussion. And I have a couple of topics I'd like to discuss with you. So one is uh, sort of philosophical. So what do you think it is the role of Debian with respect to derivatives? Should we care? Should we not care? And in particular, should we expect something from the derivative? Or should they expect something from us? So with all the quotes you can imagine. Um, what can we do more to collaborate with derivatives, or should we do less? 
And then, of course, all your experiences of collaboration with derivatives. Were they good? Were they not? What can we learn from them? In answering that, please keep in mind that having had a single bad experience doesn't mean that all the collaboration with that derivative should be bad. I'm sure we have all had bad experiences in dealing with maintainers in Debian. That doesn't mean that dealing in general with all Debian maintainers is, is something bad, okay? So please make an effort not to generalize too much. And then something we really need is for DEX. So we often say, okay, we need to merge changes from derivatives, but when we sit down and look for examples, it's not that easy to actually find a set of patches which should be merged in Debian. So if you have a specific set of patches from derivatives that you want to see merged in Debian, well, we need to hear from you because we want to set up specific initiative around that, but finding the, the target is not always that easy. Uh, and finally, about the data warehousing idea. So imagine we can collect all the information about derivatives in a single central place, be it UDT or any other uh, Debian inf mm, information place. Well, how can we leverage this information? What can we do with that to improve quality in Debian in all derivatives? So this is, this is it for the introduction. And I now leave the, word for, leave the microphone to you for comments or whatever else. Yes. In the meantime, Andreas can look for people with comments about all this. Please, please stand up and say your name. Okay. I'm Didier, but I have two questions from RC. One is, the first is from Kevin. If Debian derived distri distributions care about the packages they get from us, that seems like some concern about our actions, and thus maybe they want to have their votes included, included in our voting. That was the first they, they what? Maybe they want their votes to be included in our voting. So that, that was the first question. And the second one from Stuart Prescott. A question, there looks like there's a very low bus factor in this work. Well, PAPS is the bus factor. So how does DEX move beyond BAPS power? Well, pubs, I leave that to pubs, actually. <laughs> so um, the code that I've written for doing some checks on the census information is available on the alias, so anyone can check it out um, and work on it. And if you care about integration of derivatives into Debian, I would definitely welcome your participation in the census stuff. Um, up till now, I mostly uh, haven't been pushing my emails onto the Debian wiki, but I'm working on doing that so that other people can also do checks on the census information and send out pre-prepared um, templates. I mean, pre-prepared emails about issues that I have found so far. Um, I think it's on the census QA page, what I've done so far. Um, I've got to add more emails later, but yeah, if anyone wants to help out, that'd be awesome. Yeah, and regarding the deck specific initiative, uh, there the kudos goes mostly to uh, Matt Zimmerman, which has been doing uh, most of the initial uh, design of the idea and also you know, uh, driven the, the first initiatives we completed. Anyone else? Experience to share? Suggestion on how to improve collaboration? I, I have also a question because in, in the beginning you said uh, Debian is, is quite neutral. Um, this, this is correct, but um, well, in, in the next talk, I try to uh, say that we have internal uh, customization or preparation for derivatives, which could also be helpful and could be enhanced. Yes, I mean, that, that's, so in general, I think the relationship among blends and derivatives is a very interesting topic. So uh, what do you think? Have you ever thought about, you know, promoting specific derivatives as Debian blends? Have this ever happened? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, uh, I think the, the, the concept of blends is... Um, uh, not backed up by so many uh, very good examples. So we cannot really tell. I would love if there would be m even more specific blends and if more examples. Because finally, either, either you can this blend 
just now on your computer if it fits or you can make a very very easy derivative because everything is there so you can put your brand on it or some customization which are for whatever reason not possible in Debian but in my opinion it makes perfectly sense to, to prepare what you want to do inside Debian because it's just less work yep. later on. Um, uh, okay. um, I do am M Debian person, but this is a more general query, right? From the from the work you've done on censusing derivatives, have you worked out common mechanisms for how people manage their difference, essentially? And is there more we should be doing within Debian to allow those differences to be pushed upstream? You know, there's all sorts of mechanism you can imagine, and I wonder, a, what everybody does at the moment. Uh, and B, whether they would, uh, uh, as uh, Andrea says, whether we should be doing more of that in Debian. You know, there's quite a lot of if Ubuntu, if Debian in various packages now. So, uh, you know, they've managed to shove that upstream. Um, but then there's another 100 distros which probably have similar things. And we don't really want 100 if this, if that, if the other. Uh, just in case people don't know about it, because it was introduced a year or two ago, um, there's... Uh, the deprecate vendor command these days supports uh, saying whether you're derived from a uh, distribution. That's thanks to Raphael Herzog, I believe. Um, so if you're, uh, so if the intent is to say that anything, is, anything that is, say, Ubuntu or based on Ubuntu should behave the same way, then uh, then you can get that swathe of derivatives in one go. Maybe you should explain a little bit how does it work. I'm not sure if everyone is familiar with DPKG vendor. Sure. Um, uh, I think it might be best just to refer people to the man page. It's, uh, <laughs> but essentially, it's a DPKG tool which can use in when you build your package to take different action based, in, based on which derivative the package is, your package is being built on. Right. So you can have a sync. But that doesn't try to solve your issue with if this and if that, but it enables to actually have all the code in the source package which is as yeah. much as stream as possible. It, it allows you to consider sort of the branching structure of derivatives in a slightly more sensible way. Um, I, I, w I will say I'm not sure how many uh, uh, Debian derivatives other than Ubuntu set it up um, correctly. Uh, I, I simply don't know, but it at least provides the potential for people to do that. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's exactly the sort of mechanism I meant. That's the mechanism we've provided to allow those changes to go upstream. And the question is, how many derivatives does that satisfy? Um, you know, and should we be doing more of that? Uh, or are there, in fact, you know, different sorts of mechanisms because things don't really fit in the packages in the same way, and that's you know, not quite what's needed? And I guess you now have a better overview of that than most people. And to be honest, I haven't really looked into the um, the kind of differences that the derivatives make quite yet. Um, probably we'll start doing that once I have the uh, packages info and UDD and other things. Um, and when I start looking at integration of that with the patch tracker .org, um, there is some information on, about this stuff, like debranding Debian, in the uh, the derivatives guidelines wiki page. Um, do, do you know if it mentions the PKG vendor? I don't remember that. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but I think in Debian we could, we could be doing a lot more um, work on splitting out Debian branding into specific packages instead of being embedded in the, in the package instead. So that would mean that we could have a Debian branding package and Ubuntu wouldn't need to ship that or whatever distro wouldn't need to ship that, they'd ship their own branding. Um, I think we could do with quite a bit of work on that. There's a lot of source packages that have Debian logos or whatever, that, and then that could be in separate packages like desktop base. Um, 
there, there are also a very large number of uh, uh, translatable strings that mention specifically Debian. Um, I've uh, changed a number of those in the past. I know others have uh, generally trying to make them more generic and less Debian specific. It's not always appropriate if you're, if you're looking at the string that says Debian installer main menu. It's not really appropriate to make that uh, more generic. So, uh, uh, and unfortunately, it's rather difficult to uh, make it to simply substitute in the name because an awful lot of languages uh, transliterate the name of the distribution and decline it according to their grammatical rules, etc. It turns into a bit of a nightmare. Well, um, as to the question of Wookie, whether um, other distributions were using this and whether it's useful, it's immensely useful. Um, um, for the past releases, we also completely relied on LSB info, so we had to patch a lot of. Uh, I think we dropped at least two dozen p patches simply by switching to a DP gauge vendor because now we just declare that Debian is our parent distro and so we can just throw away, I think, at least two dozen packages. On the other side, um, I only stumbled upon DPKG dash vendor by accident when I was patching a completely different package and I noticed, what's that? Oh, this is cool. We can drop a lot of other stuff. So. Um, well, maybe, maybe it, was, it was just me missing it, but um, I, uh, it, it could possibly use a bit more publicity or, or some, some guidelines how to do it right. So just a um, very quick reply. So this kind of uh, gotcha was actually the reason to create the guidelines in the first place. It's very new documentation, so I'm not surprised it misses this kind of stuff. But maybe if you still have fresh memories of your uh, you know, bad experiences, oh, I should have known that and I didn't, maybe you can check the page and see what is missing. Very cool. Yeah, I, I would like to chime in exactly on that. Uh, it'd be great to encourage uh, derivatives to uh, publish their best practice, publish how they, de de how they derive from Debian. Um, I have been building countless derivatives for little tiny ones, and we have recipes for unattended installation and live CD builds, building from a clean subversion repository with a Debian mirror with no craft on it, and all sorts of things. We've never managed to push them up straight, to, to, to make people aware of them. I, I sometimes block them on my blog, but there should be something a bit better. And uh, well, at the end of the job, we probably forget to do it because there's a new job coming in. So even if for Dex to be proactive and kind of reach out to people and say, oh, you've done that, how? And, uh, and that can become a point of discussion, like people can say, well, I've done it in the, that other way. That's much more convenient. Oh, yeah, cool. And, and eventually you end up with recipes and best practices. Unfortunately, recipes change each uh, new Debian stable because Debian installer gets refactored and so often some of them have to be thrown away, unfortunately, but what can we do with that? But still, at least, and if Debian knows about these, what people are doing to derive it, maybe Debian can support it better. I reckon if the Debian installer people knew what are the most common recipes people are using, they may try to kind of provide a stable API about it. Paul, you wanted to add something? I, I would I'd like to comment on this, uh, because if you get the drivers to write down how and why they did it, uh, in my opinion, not in the, the, main, in the main basic derivatives, but in several small ones, uh, they are just doing be because you can do it. It is a common reason just because it's possible. And I think perhaps some, some little bit more communication that it's possible but not always the most effective way would get rid of 25%? I, don't uh, I, I apologize, I missed um, uh, quoting your documentation work you do in Debian Blend. Yeah, but this is what I mean because uh, it, it's good to have a derivative. It's quite, but, but some just create extra work for one or two people. So you're making the point of the ego derivative, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, I already wrote uh, a few notes on the copy document. Uh, one of them uh, is uh, an enhancement maybe of what Enrique was saying, uh, is um, uh, uh, um, wiki.ubuntu.com has a really good, mm, good page, which is uh, Ubuntu for Debian developers which is uh, really useful for someone that doesn't want, uh, that already knows many of the procedures that can happen in a Debian-based distribution and it does only want to know the modification, uh, the, the diff between Debian and the, and the Ubuntu and the um, derivative distribution uh, workflow. 
and uh, maybe it, was be, it would be useful with uh, other distribution had uh, such documentation as well. And uh, or, also, or I maybe think we should uh, generalize it, and uh, or maybe we should generalize it and make a sort of as neutral document uh, as possible. Sorry. I don't know. No, sorry. Okay. Go on. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is uh, that I'd, I'd like to see in, uh, in our um, okay, services, um, QA services and so on, like uh, PTS, BTS and so on, um, information about uh, what's going on in, in derivatives. So I think that uh, it would be useful if derivatives would publish a machine readable list of anything that can be helpful for us to know about them and our services integrate this, maybe in other pages if there is too much information to stay in just one page. Okay, this can be uh, discussed. But uh, anyway, this would be really helpful not to have anything to check uh, 1,000 pages to know uh, something. That is exactly what Paul is working on with the integration yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff. <laughs> uh, I thank him for that. Um, so on the machine readable part of your question, or your comment, um, I chose to do it with the wiki because I think it reduces the barrier to entry of um, if you if we require people to write some specific machine readable format, read documentation and stuff, it I think it, it's too much of a barrier to entry for these people. Um, it's a lot easier for them to register on the wiki and edit a template than it is to do that sort of thing. And so the scripts that I've written are flexible enough to read that template and work with it. Um, yeah. You're doing now some automatic processing based on the templates, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, we have some more questions from RC. Um, as far as I know, the person asking the question is a Cedux Aptosid developer. Uh, what are the experiences, good or bad, between Debian and derivatives? Uh, Ubuntu and Debian seems to work nicely according to a mediator. Does the co-working means mainly to get patches from one to the other distribution? And how can a user get more aware of this text exchange other than reading package change logs? Uh, that's a nice question. So, I, we, do, so we, we do encourage derivatives to, for instance, uh, add specific tags, user tags, to the BTS so that we can have, for instance, a list of bugs which have been forwarded from derivatives up to Debian and then, of course, to see what has been you know, done and integrating what has been not. But as far as I remember, very few derivatives actually do that. Ubuntu does that. Some other are doing that. So I think this is part of the, you know, the stuff we are trying to, to push forward because essentially in Debian, to be honest, we didn't work much with derivatives before uh, having discussed it that deeply with the Ubuntu people, and now we really need to generalize a bit all the stuff we have learned in the relationship with Ubuntu and try to encourage all other derivatives in doing that. But up to now, we have not been really been, you know, we've not been very successful, I think, in you know promoting good practices to other derivatives. Well, I have a question. Um, what do people think about um, our BTS being the right tool for this? Because it's well known that the email is not necessarily a good tool for everyone. So do people think we need another tool or is it sufficient to force people to use ours? I leave that to the pitchfork of the public. Uh, for the last question, uh, Philip Hahn, uh, Univention. Uh, we are currently in a transition from Lenny to Squeeze and uh, regarding the DEX work, we think we will, uh, when we do the switch over, we will review all our patches and then uh, go the DEX way and send our patches which are still relevant upstream to Debian. That's great. So, sorry, about your question, just, just a comment. So, I think in general, in uh, free software, we need bridges among uh, bug tracking systems, no matter what are they were or communicating one to another. So I don't think the real problem is just email, because in another system, the problem can be that you only fix bugs by committing to a bug git branch. So I mean, there is some sort of impedance mismatch among bug tracking systems, and that is, I think, a more general issue that needs to be tackled. 
in, in regards to whether the BTS is the right tool for this, I feel that as long as Debian has such an email-driven culture, it makes sense to encourage email tools so that others who want to be involved either can just will, will be able to continue the conversation when it goes out of the BTS or into another Debian forum. Barrett? Yeah, my name is Peter Reynoldsen, and uh, two observations. First, uh, you seem to be uh, arguing that all patches in derivatives should be sent to Debian. But isn't it true that most of them should be sent directly to upstream and not bother, well, the intermediates at all and just get it straight into the upstream and, and get it f to Debian from upstream? Uh, the other thing I've seen is uh, in my work with the v init the packet is it's very useful to check out the uh, the uh, non Debian derivatives as well. I've been fetching patches from Red Hat, from SUSE, uh, from Gentoo to uh, improve the Debian packages and also to send them to upstream to make sure that the new version is so is used all over the place. So we should also for, to, to remember the uh, non Debian. Uh, distributions and check out their changes because there is quite a lot of nice changes done there too. Okay, so let me clarify that. I think that everyone in that chain should push things upstream. So that's a general principle which holds for us as well. So if we receive a change for our derivatives, I think it's our duty to push it upstream. But in fact, the question is, how do you want to push it upstream? Do you want to do, imagine that you have a chain which is five blocks, do you want to do all the way block by block or you want to push it directly upstream? And this is a discussion we have had on the Debian derivatives mailing list together with uh, Jorge Castro from, um, from Ubuntu. And I think in the wiki page it has been mentioned before, there, are, there is a nice classification of the cases in which you want to push a thing to your upstream distribution and the cases in which you want to push the change directly to the upstream software developer. And of course, in general, it is, uh, if it is a packaging change, you want to push to your derivative upstream. If it is a purely software change, you want to push it to the upstream software author. But even in this case, it gets complex because maybe you push a change, a software change, to the upstream software author, but that upstream is not active anymore, is not reactive. So if you do only that, it may you know, stay there forever and other derivatives do not benefit from it. So I think we should agree on the general principle and then there will be cases in which you need to make exceptions in order to have more users possible benefit from the change. We have five minutes left. Yeah, just a quick comment on that is um, the, the back Debian backtracking system is fully open. So we can actually ask our downstreams to report bugs to the Debian BTS and then to forward that to upstream. They're like totally autonomous to do so and should. Ian, I know what Ian is going to say. <laughs> no, no, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, later. Thank you. Um, well, I don't think there's a, a, a one-size-fits-all a one answer to these questions. In general, you know, if you're a user even and you're submitting a bug, where you submit that bug depends so much on how much you know about the program and how much you know about upstream and where, where is the most efficient and effective place to file that bug. And often as a user or a downstream, it will be easier to file the bug to Debian because that gives you a consistent and clear interface. On the other hand, if you're getting deeply involved with the upstream code, you're probably going to have to get familiar with the upstream project anyway, and then you will know whether upstream is up active, whether you need to send the bug to upstream, what the right <coughs> thing to do is. And I don't think there's a, a hard and fast rule. You should just do the thing that is, in the particular situation, the most convenient for everybody. Erico? I um, uh, wanted to um, talk about uh, the, the representation of derivatives in Debian. Um, are uh, existing derivatives all having one DD among them that knows what happens in Debian and can vote in Debian? Or if not, is that, that could be something we could encourage. Uh, I know that the Gremo people applied to the NM process here at the Conf, and I thank them for it. 
and I promise I'll look into it as soon as I have a shred of time. Uh, <laughs> but, um, and I would think that could be encouraged because they are doing, you know, technical work in Debian and, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe it's a... Yeah, that's a, a quite an interesting discussion, but I think we have never actually had that. I think it would be an interesting thing to actually encourage, yes. Okay, so we have one minute left, so it's about time. Uh, go ahead, Bob. Just one comment about the suggestion before about uh, uh, collaboration with non-Debian derivatives, um, non-Debian-based distros. Um, one tool that I find really useful is a program called Who Has. Um, you run Who Has your package name, and then you get a list of links to other distros and where you can find information about that package in those distros. Often I found patches and bugs that need to be fixed and and commented on, say, a Gen 2 bug saying that, you know, this is the patch you need to apply for that. Um, yeah. Okay. So that's a really useful tool. I'm not sure if there are any others, but I'd be interested to hear about things we could do about making that easier. So just one small request, given time is up. If you have your pet set of patches in some derivative that you really want to see it in Debian, please show up on the Debian derivatives mailing list and mention that. Because it's very easy to say, oh, you know, those distributions are not giving back to Debian. But then when it comes down to identifying a set of changes and working together with them to merge it, well, in our experience with Dexos thus far, it's not that easy to actually identify the targets. So your input on that is very welcome. Thanks a lot.